I'm Luke Summerhays, and I love Sprigatito. Ever since the frog-like Bulbasaur was followed by two dinosaurs, Pokemon fans have seen a pattern in grass-type starters that seem to chart the emergence of different species throughout the history of life on Earth, with turtles and snakes followed by an owl, a hedgehog, and then a monkey. At first, I thought that presented a bit of a problem. After a primate, it seemed like the only place left to go was a hominid, and I just couldn't imagine a little caveman grass starter matching any of the previous critters for cuteness. Looking into it though, while primates have been on Earth for at least 60 million years, cats only first appeared around 10 million years ago. Sprigatito, of course, is not a fearsome prehistoric saber-tooth, but an adorable modern house cat. Cats are beloved, of the edgiest internet teens and the oldest grandmas alike, and interestingly, were not so much domesticated by humans as chose to domesticate us. Cats learned to make a noise we find cute and to hunt pests for us, until we cared for them and worshipped them, from ancient Egypt to TikTok. Similarly, Pokemon Violet tells us of Sprigatito, the sweet scent its body gives off mesmerizes those around it. The scent grows stronger when this Pokemon is in the sun. Real cats have soft fur, which is wonderful to the touch. Sprigatito looks much the same, but in reality that fur is a plant substance. Pokemon Scarlet tells us, Its fluffy fur is similar in composition to plants. This Pokemon frequently washes its face to keep it from drying out. These leaves form its name, too. In Japanese, the Pokemon is called Nyahoha, from the Japanese onomatopoeia for a cat sound, and the Spanish for leaf. The English name, Sprigatito, combines sprig, a small cutting of plant, with gatito, the Spanish for kitten. Ever since the announcement of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and the reveal of the starter Pokemon that came with it, fans began begging Sprigatito to stay on all fours and remain cat-like rather than to stand up and become a humanoid. For good or ill, their prayers were ignored, and at level 16, Sprigatito evolves into Floragato. Floragato stands on its two hind paws, and has a vaguely humanoid shape, not unlike a mascot costume or certain partner Digimon. I'm a big Digimon fan, and I quite like Floragato's design, particularly as it has a darker hue and slightly smug scowl. An especially dark pattern around the feet reminds of Puss in Boots, combined with the Paudea region's obvious inspiration from Spain and Latin countries, I can't help but think of Antonio Banderas' portrayal from the Shrek sequels. A flower on Floragato's lapel completes the look, and doubles as a kind of yo-yo which it uses for tricks and attacks. Pokemon Scarlet tells us, Floragato deftly wields the vine hidden beneath its long fur, slamming the hard flower bud against its opponents. Many Pokemon fans, like myself, cannot help but imagine living in the Pokemon world and actually befriending their in-game pals. This is one reason they might have wanted a more animal-like cat. It's far more wholesome to imagine petting a little kitty cat than something with the proportions of an adult human. Still, I think Floragato at least looks fluffy and huggable. With real cats, they need to accept you before you can fuss them and show them affection, and that's doubly true with Floragato's fur. Pokemon Violet tells us, The hardness of Floragato's fur depends on the Pokemon's mood. When Floragato is prepared to battle, its fur becomes pointed and needle-sharp. The name Floragato is made up of flora, or plant life, and now gato, the Spanish word for a fully grown cat. Nyarote keeps the cat sound and adds brote, a plant bud. That line between cute animal companion and human is blurred even further when, at level 36, Floragato evolves into Miascarada. The Paudea region takes obvious inspiration from the country of Spain. Spain, more than any other country than perhaps my own England, is infamous for conquering and expanding and colonizing. In fact, Spanish has more native speakers than English does, 
though it is beaten by overall number of speakers because English is such a popular second language. It's therefore interesting to see the three starters of this generation take inspiration not just from Spain, but also from various places around the world which were once under Spanish rule, just as the Galar region featured Indian elephants. Meowskarada is a grass and dark type Pokemon, carrying itself with the air of a magician. Its face resembles a masquerade mask, hence the English name and the similar Japanese name, Maskranya. The flower it once hung around as a yo-yo, it now hovers mystically. Of course, masquerade balls are very European, but the particular design of this Pokemon's mask is very reminiscent of the popular jester look from Mardi Gras, the famous carnival from New Orleans, a city which was indeed once under Spanish control. And the carnival comes from that Catholic rulers, and I was surprised to learn that it more or less correlates with Pancake Day in the UK. Meowskarada doesn't just have the look of a magician, but uses its dark type to enact impressive acts of sorcery. Pokemon Scarlet tells us, this Pokemon uses the reflective fur lining in its cape to camouflage the stem of its flower, creating the illusion that the flower is floating. And Violet tells us, With skillful misdirection, it rigs foes with pollen-packed flower bombs. Bialskarada sets off the bombs before its foes realize what's going on. This is all reflected in-game, where that dark type is combined with excellent speed and a signature move, Flower Trick which always hits and always deals critical damage. I'm a water type guy, and in my main game of Pokemon Scarlet, I have been enjoying my time with Quaxley and its evolutions. For the copy of Pokemon Violet I'm using to stream on Twitch, I held a vote on Twitter to see which of the two remaining starters I should pick. Sprigatito won by a landslide. Music for Luke Loves Pokemon is by Jonathan Cromey. Artwork for the show is by Katie Groves. Writing, producing, and editing is all by me. Luke Summerhays, and funding is provided by lovely listeners at patreon.com slash podcastio podcastius. I love it when you guys get in touch. Hit me up on Twitter or Facebook at Luke Loves PK Men, and let me know your thoughts about our next monsters, Fuecoco and Quaxley, or share your love for any Pokemon. Also, join me Friday and Saturday nights from 8pm UK time at twitch.tv slash Luke Loves PK Men for those streams. And even if you don't feel like doing any of that, Thank you so much just for listening. I love Sprigatito. And remember, I love you too.